I've been an iPhone user ever since the iPhone 6, and now I own an iPhone 12 Pro Max, which I love because of the super immersive 6.7 inch display and the new square edge design that makes it feel fresh and unique. However, Samsung just released the brand new S21 Ultra, and I've been playing around with it for the last week or so, and I've gotta say that I'm really impressed but at the same time, there are a couple of things that I'm disappointed about. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience with the S21 Ultra for the past week, including both the pros and the cons, because yes, this phone is definitely not perfect, but before I get into that, I wanna start with the physical differences. I absolutely love the massive 6.8 inch display, even though it's technically only slightly larger than the 6.7 inch display on my iPhone. But thanks to the very subtle hole punch selfie camera, it's a whole lot more immersive than the iPhone. So watching YouTube videos or whatever else is definitely a better experience on the S21 Ultra, especially since the speakers are incredible. They're louder and they sound better than on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The only area where the iPhone wins is in terms of the high frequency notes, which sound a bit brighter. Here's a speaker comparison so you can hear the difference for yourself. Now getting back to the display, it's very nice and bright and the colors look great as well. It didn't do quite as well in the HDR video test for some reason, but it's still a top notch display. The absolute best thing about the S21 Ultra is that you can now finally have both 120Hz refresh rate and full 1440p resolution at the same time. This is amazing, it's a game changer because it's been one of the biggest drawbacks with previous Samsung phones. Now the the way they achieved this was by allowing the display to automatically adjust the refresh rate from 120Hz all the way down to 10Hz, which greatly helps save battery life when you're watching videos or playing games. This is the one feature that I really, really want on my iPhone, but unfortunately, it's stuck at only 60 hertz refresh rate, so the S21 Ultra definitely feels nice and snappy while using it with that 120 hertz. Now on the other hand, one of the main benefits with the iPhone is the new A14 Bionic chip, which is much faster than the brand new Snapdragon 888 in the Samsung. And that's one of the disappointments with it because it's honestly not that much faster than the Note 20 Ultra. However, I did play some games with both of these phones and I got some very interesting results. They both handled Call of Duty Mobile and Genshin Impact pretty well in terms of performance and smoothness. However, the iPhone's display dimmed like crazy after around 10 to 15 minutes, which was extremely disappointing. That's because the iPhone has a very bad cooling system, so it overheats very quickly compared to the S21 Ultra, which stayed very cool, and the display stayed nice and bright throughout the entire gaming session. Now moving away from the display and performance, I want to get into the design. The S21 Ultra is definitely thick, sitting at a massive 8.9 millimeters, which is 1.5 millimeters thicker than my iPhone, so you can definitely tell the difference. But due to the rounded sides, it's still pretty comfortable to hold in your hand, but I couldn't imagine using a case with this. It's gonna turn it into a brick. However, the extra thickness does make the battery larger, so I've gotta say that I'm impressed with this battery life, even though you're getting the much better display than on the iPhone. As far as the design, I love that there aren't any buttons on the left side of the S21 Ultra, and I do like how the power button on the right is perfectly placed for my thumb, so that's great. The USB-C port is of course very nice compared to Lightning because you can simply use the same USB-C cable to charge both your laptop and the S21 Ultra, so it's the best option for sure. But besides that, the new fingerprint scanner from Qualcomm is a huge improvement. 
because of the much larger surface area, it's more reliable since you don't have to have absolutely perfect placement every single time. I've also noticed that the speed is faster as well, so it totally beats out Face ID on the iPhone, and it's a great solution for those who are wearing masks all day. Now I know that this is the first Galaxy S series phone with S Pen support, but honestly, I never use it, so I don't care for it at all. But for others who really care about it, they can definitely get this phone instead of being limited to the Note series. Now before I get into the main issues, I do want to mention that the S21 Ultra is an absolutely great value compared to the S20 Ultra from last year. This time, it's $200 less expensive, and it fixes the absolutely biggest problem, and that was the cameras. The S20 Ultra had massive autofocusing issues, which ruined the camera quality. And although Samsung advertised 100x space zoom, it really wasn't that great because the telephoto lens only had up to 4x optical zoom. And on top of that, the 108 megapixel sensor didn't really help much at all. But thankfully, the S21 Ultra fixes all of those camera issues, so let me explain and show you some comparison photos from our recent blind camera test videos. The autofocus works just fine thanks to the new laser autofocus sensor, so that's finally fixed. We now get two telephoto lenses, a 3x optical zoom, which greatly improves detail at medium range compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. But check out how good the 10x optical lens is. You can actually take a photo of the moon and see a bunch of detail compared to a blurry mess with the iPhone. And here's a long range shot using this lens, so this can really help you take great zoom photos. And finally, the 108 megapixel camera works a lot better now since Samsung has tuned the software over the last year and it ends up putting out some very sharp photos. So I've got to say, Samsung absolutely killed it with the S21 Ultra in terms of the camera performance. Now getting into the downsides, I honestly don't really like the look of the camera bump. It sort of blends into the frame so it just doesn't stand out as much and to be honest, it just looks very bland. The camera bump on the Note 20 Ultra looks amazing and it makes it seem so much more premium than the S21 Ultra. Another downside is the fact that there's no micro SD card slot anymore, so you've got to pay for the storage up front. And of course, there's no charger and no earbuds in the box, so they're definitely following in Apple's footsteps. So seeing as they ditched out on those items, the $1,200 price tag doesn't really seem like that great of a deal since you can get the iPhone 12 Pro Max for $100 less. And of course, the very small jump in performance on the Snapdragon 888 processor is a bit disappointing since they're now using a 5 nanometer chip process from TSMC. So Apple is definitely way ahead in terms of their chip designs. But with all of that said, I've got to say that the S21 Ultra is really impressive because it finally ticks a lot of the main boxes that matter to a lot of people, whereas with the iPhone, you have a lot of compromises. The S21 Ultra gives you a very high 120Hz refresh rate while running at full resolution on the beautifully immersive display with a subtle hole punch camera. On top of that, the new fingerprint scanner works great, and even though the phone is pretty thick, the great battery life makes it worth it. The camera performance is absolutely phenomenal thanks to software tuning and the 10x optical lens, which gives you the best zoom shots you can get. And finally, gaming and Genshin Impact was great because it doesn't overheat like the iPhone does, offering you reliable gaming performance. These are all things that are lacking on the iPhone, so I've got to honestly say that if you don't mind using Android software, then the S21 Ultra gives you a lot of value and since it checks so many boxes, this is a phone you can comfortably keep for the next three years without being tempted to upgrade when the next one comes out, which is what always happens with iPhones. So there you guys go. My experience with the S21 Ultra has been very positive, so good job, Samsung. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and tap the like button and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.